Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at encoding black and white images based on the code.org curriculum. All right, let's get going. If you are here just for the practice questions, go ahead and skip now. All right, but first a speed review. Computer hardware operates in terms of on or off, and because of that we store information as bits, which are only on and off. Computers store number by making these bits place values in the binary system, and then computers store text and characters by converting those text and characters to numbers and then converting those decimal numbers to binary. So that's all the review stuff. The new stuff is this. How do computers store black and white images using bits? So we need a system to do this. So if you're in class, we'll ask you to try to come up with a scheme. And the scheme the class usually comes up with is this. We take the white dots and we make those on, and we take the black ones and we make those off. You could reverse those if you wanted to, as long as everybody uses the same convention. But usually, for most people, it makes more sense to have the light color correspond to turning the bit on. So when we do that encoding, we get a string of bits that looks like this. These arrows show how the bits match the pixels, at least for the first six. And there you go, hopefully not too hard. But there is a little bit of a trick, and it's this. Real life A's do not look like this. Instead, they look like the one on the left here. There's a pair of terms that you absolutely positively have to know for the APCSP exam, and that is analog. And so analog means real world versus digital, which is the computer world. So again, analog, digital, you have to know these terms. I've seen a lot of APCSP practice questions where you have to recognize the difference between the two. So let's look at that right now. Analog images are real world. That A that I drew is just basically, I drew it with a pen. Digital images are computer. Analog images are smooth and continuous. You look at that A, it's smooth and continuous. Digital images are discrete. That means they're made up of a whole lot of chunks. So, so if you look at this digital image, it's a whole lot of squares, a lot of pixels, that's discrete. Analog images or real world images are considered to have perfect detail. Whereas digital images are not perfect. They're approximate, limited by how many of those little dots or pixels that you have. Almost for sure, you're going to get at least one question on the APCSP exam that's like this. So you want to be able to recognize the difference between the two. Okay, so I've gone over all these things you'll need to know for the exam, but we're back to where we started, which is how do you go from analog to digital? So here is the process. We're going to do something called sampling. This is an important word for the APCSP exam. And what sampling means is that we're going to measure at regular intervals. And what does that mean? Well, for images, usually it means we make a grid. And then for each square, we'll make a best guess as to whether that square is either on or off, black or white. Sampling isn't necessarily grid. If we're sampling in audio, it means we're measuring at regular intervals, usually like fractions of a second. But for images, it'll be making a grid. So after we finish our sampling, then we can convert to binary. These are all kind of hard concepts to grasp. So I'm going to show how they all work with code.org's lab. All right, here we go with code.org problems. Code.org has a video which goes over how this widget works. If you watch that video, they're going to talk about certain stuff like metadata, which is data about data. Code.org has changed the curriculum since, and so now they go over that later. But just so you know, metadata is data about data. And in this case, the metadata would be the dimensions of the image. But let's try this first one now. Task one is to make a three by five letter A. So in this example, the sampling has already been done for you. So it's really just a matter of how you're going to represent this image using bits. And we're going to say the white is going to be on or one, and the black is going to be zero or off. So first we need to make this three by five. And we're making the letter A. So again, the white is on, the black is off. And there it is. There's your A. Okay, this next one, I need to delete one bit. It's an extra bit. Truthfully, I don't like this one that much but I'll show you how to do it. I don't assign it for my personal class. I just don't think it's all that useful. But anyway, we need to delete one extra bit. That bit happens to be right here. And when I delete that bit, you see the C shows up for the code.org. Okay, this next one. This next one really gets to the heart of what digital and analog images are. So the swan right here, that's an analog image. We're gonna sample it to try to turn it into a digital image. So this sampling has it be a six by eight image, a six by eight image. So let's do that first, it's six by eight. And how many pixels is that? It's 48, and that comes from six times eight equals to 48. Okay, so starting from the upper left, that one is gonna be on, because it's white, it's on. But what about the next one? There's a little bit of black in it, what should it be? And the answer is that pretty much all the answers are wrong. You could say it's white, you could say it's black, but it's gonna be partly right and partly wrong. And that's the price you pay when you don't use enough bits 
for your image. So I'm just going to guess here, and I'm going to guess for the next one, and the next one after that, and the next one after that, and the next one after that. Uh, let's call this one right here white. All right, so there's an approximate version of that swan. It's not a very good version of the swan. You'll see that all these pixels, all these squares, make it discrete as opposed to the analog image, which is smooth and continuous. And truthfully, that's about as good as I'm going to get with only 48 pixels, 6 by 8. All right, so let's try the next one now. So this time around, it's the same exact problem, except in, I'm going to sample it, and I'm going to make the sampling more fine, which means there's more bits. This one will be 12 by 16, 12 by 16. So that's 12 times 16 bits, which I think is 192. So this is basically four times as many bits as the other picture, which means, which means it takes up four times as much space in storage. So first I need to make this 12 by 16. Now for something that takes up more space, hopefully it's gonna look better. So let's try that out now. So this top row, right away you see that it's a lot easier. Anyway, it looks something like that. That's actually not all that great. I'm sure I'm screwing this up somewhere. But it does look better than the other one. So again, the key concepts. The original swan, that's an analog image. It's a perfect image. It's smooth and continuous. And it's 100% accurate. My digital image, it's not smooth or continuous. It's discrete, meaning it's made up of each of these little pixels. And it's an approximation of what the actual image looks like. So again, this one's not all that great, but I'm going to say it's good enough for now. And lastly, this one is, you know, a little bit better, but it takes up four times as much space. All right, next question. Select your favorite company logo and recreate this logo. So I'm just going to do something simple. Typically, people in my class do something really simple, although every so often you'll see something really cool. Let's see here. Uh, maybe I'll do... That's a W for Woo. Good enough for government work. Again, there's a lot of people who do really cool stuff, uh, but that takes kind of a long time. So I don't think it's really worth the time to do that, but maybe your teacher says otherwise. All right, on to the next one. Okay, assume your friend sent you 32 bits of pixel data encoded after sampling an image. So choose the two statements that are true. So A and C go together. Basically, A says 32 bits is all you need. No, 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 no. You have to send the correct width and height. And between those two, C is correct. Why? Because a 32-bit image can be 32 by 1, 1 by 32, 16 by 2, 2 by 16, 8 by 4, or 4 by 8. You can't really 100% know what that image is, and so you need to send along the correct width and height. This is something we call metadata, and it's something code.org had in an earlier version of this lab. All right, and if you look again, B and D go together. B says the digital image is an exact copy of the analog image, and D says no, it may vary from the analog image significantly. So we just did this two seconds ago. We know that digital images are not going to be exact copies of the analog image. So D is your answer. Okay, next one. One of these results in a better digital approximation of an analog black and white image. So we just did this as well. We find that the finer our sampling, the more samples we take, the more measurements we take. So when we reduce the distance between our measurement, we get a better picture. So increasing the number of samples gives you a better approximation. Finally, they want us to sample an image that is four by six. How will we sample it? What sample size will we use? And how would our decision affect the digital representation? So I think the first answer is that you want to have the sampling be fine enough so that your digital image looks a lot like your analog image. You don't necessarily know ahead of time when this would be, but you could keep on creating digital representations and then stop when going finer in sampling doesn't really improve your image. And as far as how my decision affects the digital representation, well, in general, the more pixels I have, the more similar the digital and analog pictures will look. On the other hand, the more pixels I have or the more often that I sample, the more space this is going to take in storage. Here are four practice questions. First one. Which of the following could be represented as a series of binary numbers? Images, numbers, audio. Well, with one, images, we've done this in our lab, and two, numbers, we've also done this in the lab, 
so you know one and two are true. Well, what about three audio? And here's a rule of thumb. If you can store this information in the computer, you can represent it as binary or bits. So anything the computer can represent can be stored as bits. This seems like almost a stupid question, but I have seen versions of this question floating around, so you want to be able to solve it. Next question, one of these is not true about analog and digital data. So earlier I had shown a chart of analog versus digital. Basically, you'll just want to memorize this chart for the exam. So A, digital data is discrete and discontinuous. That is true. B, more frequent sampling means the digital data is more like analog data than with less frequent sampling. You just did this lab with the swans. The more sampling you do, the more the digital approaches analog. So this is true. C, analog data is smooth and continuous. That's true. And it's the opposite of digital data being discrete and discontinuous. D, audio from playing a piano is an example of digital data. That's false. Audio from playing a piano is real world data. So this is gonna be analog data. So your answer here is D. Question three, which of the following is not true about analog and digital data? So it's a similar kind of a question. A, painting drawn by artist is an example of digital data. This is false because analog data is real world data and digital data is computer data. So you're gonna painting drawn by artist is real world data. This is false. B, more frequent sampling means more storage space is required. This is true. The more bits you have, the more storage you have to use. C, digital data is created when analog data is sampled and converted into bits. This is the process that you just did. We sampled the picture of the swan at regular intervals, that's sampling, and then we converted those into bits. D, my weight measured by an electronic scale is an example of digital data. The trick thing here is electronic scale. That's a computer, so it's already an example of digital data. So this is true, D is true. So your answer here is what is not true, that's A. All right, last question. Again, it's a similar type of question. Which of these following is least true? So I know we did this lab using an image. This question has to do with audio, but the concepts are really the same between audio and images. So A, live audio is an example of analog data. This is true, analog data is real world data. B, more frequent sampling means a digital recording will more closely approximate the live performance than if using less frequent sampling. So you just did this in the lab when you went to 192 pixels instead of 48 pixels, the picture got better. So B is true. C, a digital version of the performance is created when the audio is sampled at regular time intervals then converted into bits. So you basically just did this process with an image. This is describing the process with audio. But the main concept is you're sampling something at regular intervals and then converting those samples into bits. So C is true. D, digital versions of the performance are created when the audio is rounded to either a zero or one, whichever is closer. So this one is a little bit tricky. This one is wrong. Why is it wrong? It's because it leaves out the sampling step. You don't take the entire performance and convert that into zero or one. You have to sample it and convert those individual samples into bits. So again, D is wrong because you've left out the sampling. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.